Wait, what is this? It's a 2D game? This sucks. I'm not playing this game. Hey, wait, wait. Yeah. What if I made this game a little 3D? Wow. This is the best game ever. Hey there. In this video, we're gonna create a top-down parallax effect with only one shader. This is gonna add a little more depth to your game and make it look somewhat 3D. Now we will be doing this with just one shader. So there's no 3D cameras or vertex buffers involved at all. And this can easily be applied to any regular 2D game in Game Maker. By the way, if you wanna learn more about Game Maker, then make sure to check out my crafting course on Udemy. A link will be in the description. First, we're gonna look at how this technique actually works. When you draw a sprite, it basically draws a rectangle with the texture on it. So in the end, you see the image, but essentially it's still a rectangle. And we're gonna be modifying this rectangle for creating our parallax effect. Now this rectangle has four corners or four vertices. These vertices control the shape of the rectangle and ultimately how the image is rendered. So we can modify these vertices using a vertex shader. If you've ever created a shader in Game Maker, you'll know that there's a vertex shader and a fragment shader. The vertex shader is what operates on each vertex or corner of the rectangle. So using a vertex shader, we can move the top vertices of an image to create a parallax effect. Again, we only need to move the vertices at the top and the ones at the bottom will stay where they are. Now here's how the parallax is going to work. First, we're gonna be getting the position of the camera. Now this will be at the center of the camera and the parallax will be relative to this point. Now for each vertex, we're gonna be getting the x and y difference between the position of that vertex and the position of the camera. Then that offset will be added back to the position of the vertex. So this way, we'll have a basic parallax effect. It basically moves a vertex based on the distance between that vertex and the camera. Now there is one small problem. The shader doesn't know if a vertex is at the top or at the bottom. So as a result, it's simply gonna move all the vertices instead of moving the top vertices only. So here's what we're gonna do to fix this issue. In the shader, we're gonna calculate the height of the vertex. That height will be relative to the bottom of the rectangle. So the vertices at the top will have the height of the image and the vertices at the bottom will have a height of zero. That's because these vertices are already at the bottom and so their heights will be zero. So now for each vertex we have a height value and you're probably wondering what we're gonna do with this height. Remember how we calculated the offset between the vertex and the camera? And then we added that offset back to the position of the vertex? Now normally this would happen for all the vertices because the shader doesn't know which vertex it's working on. But if we multiply the offset with the height, then we can get the result that we want. This way the bottom vertices will not move at all because their heights are zero. So as a result, only the top vertices will move. Now since we are multiplying the offset with the height, the parallax will now be dependent on the height of the image. So if the image is taller, then there will be a greater parallax effect. And if the image is shorter, then the parallax will be small. Now later in the video, I am gonna explain how we're gonna calculate the height of a vertex. But first we're gonna go into Game Maker and set some things up. I'm gonna go under Tools and here open Texture Groups. And here we're gonna disable the Automatically Crop option. Basically what this does is if you have an image and that image has some empty space around it, then that is removed when the game is compiled. So the image will be automatically cropped. Now we don't want this to happen for our example, which is why we are disabling it. And if you have some more texture groups here, then make sure to disable automatic cropping for them as well. Now we're gonna set up our depth ordering. This will be an important part of how the parallax is going to work. So I'm gonna go into my game manager object and here go into the end step event. You can see I already have some depth code here. I'm running some code in all the instances under this with statement. And in that code, I'm simply setting the depth to minus p box bottom. This is how I usually do depth ordering. And you might know this technique as depth equals minus y. That's where the depth is based on a y coordinate. So that y coordinate in our case is the b box bottom. That is the bottom y coordinate of the bounding box or the mask. Now instead of using the bottom y of the mask, we're gonna use the bottom y of the sprite itself. 
So I'll remove this line and instead add this. Here we are calculating the bottom y of the sprite and not the mask. For that here I'm subtracting the y origin from the height of the sprite. And then we can add that to the y to get the bottom of the sprite of the instance. And now that we have that, we can apply it to the depth with a minus sign. And this is how our depth ordering is gonna work. Now let me explain what this is gonna do for the parallax effect. We are setting the depth to the bottom y of the instance. If you've seen my video on the 2.5D platformer, you'll know that the depth is the third dimension. So each instance has an X, a Y, and a depth, which is the Z. Now the Z value can be accessed inside a shader. And since it is equal to the bottom Y, we can use it to calculate the height of each vertex. So we can simply get the difference between the Y and the Z, and that should give us the height of the vertex. Now we can finally start working on our shader. So I'm gonna go into shaders and create a new one and I'll name this as H Parallax. Now you are gonna see a vertex shader and a fragment shader. As I said before, we only need the vertex shader, so I'm gonna close the fragment shader. Now in the shader before the main function, I'm gonna create a new constant value. This will be a float called parallax amount. By the way, if you've never made a shader before, you can check out my video on shaders here. Now here we are creating a constant float called parallax amount set to 0.5. A constant is a value that cannot be changed. And a float is a simple number that allows decimal values. Now the parallax amount will control the parallax effect. So if you increase this value, there will be a more noticeable effect. For this example, I've set it to 0.5. But realistically, I would set it to somewhere around 0.2. Now we're gonna go into the main function. And here, first of all, get the camera's position. We can do that by reading the view matrix. Now you don't have to know anything about matrices for this. Just understand that this matrix contains the position of the camera. Then we're gonna create a vector2 for storing the position of the camera. A vector2 is a group of two values, which in this case are the x and y. We are creating that vector here. We are simply reading the view matrix to get the x and y position of the camera. But these values will be negative, and we want positive values. So to flip the sign, we are simply gonna add a minus here. And now that we have the camera's position, we are gonna calculate the height of the vertex. For that here, I'm gonna create a new float simply called height. I'm gonna get the difference between the z and the y of the vertex. Now back in GML, we set the depth to minus bottom y. So that y coordinate becomes a negative value. Now in the shader, we wanna turn it back into a positive value. And that's why we have a minus here before the z for flipping its sign again. Now you know that the height will later be multiplied with the offset. But by itself, the height is a very large value, which is why we have to divide it by 1000 first. And now we can get the offset between the vertex and the camera. The offset will be 2D with X and Y coordinates, which is why we need to create a vector 2. It'll be equal to the difference between the X and Y of the vertex and the position of the camera. Now the camera position is already a vector 2, as you can see here. But the position of the vertex is a vector 4, as you can see here. So that's why here we are only getting the X and Y from that vector. And now that we have the offset, we can finally apply it to the vertex to create a parallax effect. So for that, we are gonna modify the x and y position of the vertex. We are adding to it, as you can tell by the plus sign here. And what we are adding to it is simply the offset multiplied with the parallax amount multiplied with the height. So the vertex will be moved based on the offset, the parallax amount, and its height. And that's all we need to do for the shader. Now we can go ahead and apply it to our objects. What I wanna do now is to apply the shader to all the instances that are drawn in the room. Due to our depth ordering method, instances are drawn from top to bottom. So an instance at the very top of the room would be drawn first and an instance at the very bottom would be drawn last. So we're gonna use this to enable and disable our shader. Basically, we're gonna place an instance at the top that enables the shader and another instance at the bottom that disables it. 
So the shader will be enabled here, then all the instances will be drawn one by one, and then finally the shader will be disabled. I'm gonna close the room now, and we're gonna create the objects. I'll put them in a group, simply called shader setters. First I'm gonna create an object called O shader enable, and then another object called O shader disable. So you can tell what they are gonna do. I'm gonna go into O shader enable, and here add the draw event. In the event, I'll simply set the shader to SH Parallax. Now we're gonna go into O shader disable, and here to add the draw event. And in the event, we are simply gonna reset the active shader. Now I'm gonna open the room, and here place O shader enable at the top, and then O shader disable at the bottom. Now we can finally run the game, and see our shader in effect. And there we go, our parallax is working perfectly. Now of course this is a little much, as I said earlier, I would set the parallax amount to be somewhere around 0.2. So I'm gonna do that, and now the effect is more subtle and nicer. Now since we turned off automatic cropping, you should trim your images manually. So you can go into the image editor, go under image, and simply select auto trim. That's gonna remove the empty spaces from your images. This is somewhat important, because if you have empty spaces around your images, then the parallax effect is not gonna look perfect. Now finally I have a simple lighting trick that you can do with this shader. Basically you can make the images lighter at the top, adding more depth to your game. This here is a vector that stores color values. These color values are multiplied with the color values in the image. So to create our lighting effect, we can modify this vector. I'm gonna modify only the RGB values in the vector, so those are the red, green, and blue color values. We're gonna be multiplying with them. Now the base value will be 1, which means that there will be no change. Then we're gonna add something to it. That will be the height and the parallax amount multiplied together. And then we can multiply that with any arbitrary value to control this effect. So I've chosen 2.5 for that. Now since we are multiplying the numbers with the height here, the lighting will only affect the top vertices. So if you run the game now, you'll see that the trees are lighter at the top. Especially if you compare it with the previous version, you can see it looks nicer. And that's all for the video. You can check out my other videos in this playlist here, or this video here. I'm always making content on GameMaker, so make sure to subscribe here, and I will see you in the next video.